Hi, in this tutorial we're just going to have a very brief introduction to Ka and pKa. So Ka, if you remember from the other tutorials, is the acid dissociation constant and pKa is, a, is a, a term we use just like we used in pH. So remember pH was the uh, negative log of the concentration of H plus ions in solution. And that's that's really only applicable for strong acids, things like HCl, which uh, completely dissociate to give H plus and Cl minus in this case. So a strong acid is one uh, which will give an equal number of protons for the amount of acid that was added. For weak acids, things like ethanoic acid, so this is ethanoic acid, this doesn't come off completely so you don't get complete dissociation and in aqueous solutions in water um, this species will will end up in equilibrium so you got CH3 as a carboxylate there and H plus so if we know how many moles of that we've added it doesn't necessarily mean we know how many moles of H plus are around. Okay, oops, just undo that. It doesn't necessarily mean, if I just circle that, how much of this we have. Okay, if we added one mole of HCl for a strong acid, we would know we'd have one mole of, of H plus present. So we can actually work out the pH because we can actually uh, we assume that the HCl we add goes to, com goes to completion to give us this. So we can put that value, whatever that value is there, how many moles of that should equal the number of moles of, of that. It's different for weak acids because we don't know how much we're adding. But these equilibrium constants, Ka, can be determined. And there are there are values for them at, at room temperature and different temperatures. Okay, so this is, is not a black art. We, we do have values for how far over to the the right hand side for example this acid will go at 25 degrees for example so in doing that we're having those values we end, end up with the same kind of situation we had with H plus we end up with really big values so they, they'll range from um, you know times 10 to the 1 to times 10 to the uh, 14 and things like that but similar to what we had for the concentration of H plus in the pH tutorial. So we introduce another term which might be familiar to you or, or not is pKa. It's, it's just a variant of pH and pKa is basically the negative log of Ka. And I've not, I've not actually mentioned what Ka is. Uh, so Ka, if you've not seen the uh, dissociation constant tutorial, Ka is basically defined as concentration of H plus multiply the concentration of, well actually let's just call that A minus, divided by the initial concentration of your acid that you added. Okay, so in this case this is HA, this is A minus, and this of course is H plus. Okay, so that's Ka. So once we have these values, we take Ka and we get more manageable numbers uh, by using this pKa scale. If we want to work out um, the equilibrium constant and we know what the pKa is, again we just rearrange this equation, uh, raising to the power of 10, and we get uh, the uh, negative uh, pKa value there. So 10 to the minus pKa will give us our Ka value. And I'll put a few uh, examples of this up as for you to try out yourself. So that's basically an introduction to Ka and pKa. One last thing I'd like to mention though is that as a low value of Ka, so if this is low, this is small, should give a high value of pKa. And if we look at this equation here, um, what does a low value of Ka mean? It means we've got a larger uh, number here and smaller numbers on top. So that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Because a high pKa, if you remember with the pH scale, a high pKa or a high pH 
is more of an alkali kind of speak, species or more basic species. And that kind of ties in with that because it's basically saying there's not going to be a lot of H plus around okay? if, if the Ka value is low. If the Ka, Ka value is high, then basically the pKa will be low. So you'll have a low value. And that kind of makes sense if we put uh, this equation, uh, this um, formula into this equation. So we've got HCl on the bottom there. And we know that that completely dissociates, so there's not going to be much of this around, but there's going to be a lot of that around. So Ka is going to be high, which means pKa is going to be low. And again, it follows a similar trend to pH. So that's a basic introduction to Ka, the acid the dissociation constant, and pKa. And you'll come across pKa quite a lot in your studies. So bye for now.